So Stephen Kostansky, who is the director of Psycho Gorman, The Void, and his new feature film, Frankie Frico, which just premiered at the Fantasia International Film Festival, is here today to talk to me about his new film. Let's get into it. Steve, I'm so glad to have you back on. I don't know if you remember me from before. We had a good yeah, talk. Yeah, I remember we did talk. that a little while back. Yeah, about three years ago, I think it was. But, uh, man, you have been busy. You got two movies you're working on. Well, you did one now and another one that you're working on with uh, the Death Stalker, right? And then, yes. uh, which I can't wait to see, too. But uh, I, I didn't even know that you had this Frankie Frico movie in the works. Like, where did well, this come Frankie from? Frankie started uh, because Deathstalker got pushed. Like we were trying to get that one going. It was like 2022, and uh, yeah, just like the way things lined up at, and financing stuff, it ended up getting pushed much later. And so I had a gap of time. I was like, well, why don't we just try and slot in another movie? And so I had this sort of on the back burner. I had a treatment that I'd written years ago, and I was like, well, why don't we? dust this off and make it because i really want to make a little monster movie and in my head this was like a smaller project and therefore easier to bang out uh which ended up not being true but yeah it, so we dived into this and now there's yeah this kind of overlap where frankie's coming out and death stalker's probably coming out next year sometime so That's yeah awesome. it went from like not seemingly like not doing anything to all of a sudden just like full steam ahead on everything. Hey, so. you made it work too. Cause this looks like this movie is so much bigger. I love how you opened it up towards the last half of the movie. Like I love well, what yeah. you did with some of the stuff in there. Cause like, I just love when people get real creative with, I don't want to say it. Cause you know, like it, it's a kind of a surprise a little bit, but yeah. Well, and yeah, that was my logic when I was writing it was like, I personally, was can see myself watching a movie like this and then about halfway through being like are they gonna like go somewhere other than this house at some point like you know you, it is a contained movie and kind of we're selling it as that but it does get very big which uh, is why i think you called it uh evil dead Two. the evil dead Two. uh yeah yeah the world gets bigger and like even within the context of the house, trying to find ways to make the space interesting and dynamic. I got to give credit to uh, Pierce Dirks, my DOP, who like uh, assigned looks to certain points in the day and throughout the story. So like, you know, there's like the late night look, there's an early morning look, there's like a, yeah, like a post-destruction look. There's like different stages that the house goes through where it has different vibes and tones. And that was all just in how he shot it, how he lit it, how much atmosphere we used. Because, uh, yeah, I feel like that's the thing you got to be conscious of when you're navigating the same spaces over and over again. You want to keep it as interesting as possible. So, yeah, it's a fun challenge. Just the kind of thing I like doing. It's like you're kind of handed a scenario and it's like, how can you make the most out of not right. a lot? Make it work really quick, too, and try to get it out there as quick as you It doesn't look like it's quick, I'm just saying, but... <laughs> Well, it's also like speaking of quick, like this is my first I think eighty two minute movie, which I'm so excited about because that to me is like that's a real sweet spot for this type of movie. Uh, especially in this age of like just every movie being way too long. Yeah, like watching it last night at the premiere, it just went down so smooth, like there wasn't any like dead spots. It's like it like slaps you around and then the credits roll which is, I think, how a lot more movies need to need to behave. I, so. I, and you know what? It was like a really refreshing treat to watch something just so different and so unique. Yes. Because uh, there's nothing out there. I mean, the only other one I think of maybe is like All Neighbors Must Die or something close to that. That's even close to it. And uh, Yeah. Yeah. That was so. part of the motivation for it, too, is I'm always trying to think, like, well, what's the type of movie that I'm not seeing right now? And, like... And this is not to knock on like serious, gritty, dark horror movies. Sure. I love them too. Like, I mean, The Void is not a pleasant experience. Like, there's a place for it, but I, I, you got to have some levity. Like, I think of like the video store shelves, and it's like 
you could have Prince of Darkness and like Puppet Master like adjacent to each other with like Ghoulies go to college on the other side. Like you could have you could have variety. Variety is important to me. And I think in genre cinema now, especially, it's like it seems like when a studio hits a thing, they're like, Oh, conjuring that work, let's just make a bunch of those. Right. And I, I just I want to be able to get some like tonal whiplash when I'm watching my genre movies. You well, know, like back like- in the day. No, go ahead. Oh, I was I was go ahead and finish. I was just going to say, like, back in the day, renting a stack of VHS tapes, it's yeah. like the spines would be like a rainbow of color because it's like every type of horror movie, like, in that stack and watching them back to back to be able to go from, yeah, a Ghoulies Go to College to a Phantasm to, uh, to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's like, right. I don't know. That's like the, that's the fun house that is genre cinema. And right. I feel like. I feel Frankie like Canadians get away with yeah. that a lot more than we do. You know what I mean? Like you guys seem think to so? have, I th- feel like you guys have way more open-minded, maybe producers or something. You know what I mean? Like they, they see the vision more than we do down here. Cause we try uh-huh. to do that and it's like, I don't know. Well, I think like in this case, like in credit to, uh, Henry Teen and Raven Banner and Choke Factory for signing off on this movie at all. Um, uh, but like, Part of the pitch was we're going to do this for real cheap so just let us make the movie we want to make uh the the issue the producer notes start to come in when you're when you're like creeping up into the like 1.5 2 million dollar budgets and beyond and it's understandable like when you're putting a lot of money on something you're making an investment you want it to pay off uh but my logic with this one was like well let's just like kind of eat those costs but make the craziest movie we can make so yeah that's the trade-off is like you know it, it was a real cheap production where everyone took a hit on their paychecks but we got to make a crazy thing so yeah you've that's what it's proven to, to to make a dollar stretch you know give you've oh yeah done that yeah well i mean it helps when i'm like doing have to be effects myself too <laughs> and that's but that's so far been every movie i've ever made there's no escaping it so oh man speaking of which i mean how did you first of all i gotta ask how did you come up with this idea i mean there's so many things of nostalgia in there that i saw and i, I gotta ask you this was there a nod to roger rabbit in there probably without me even realizing it maybe like okay i i brought this up people in the past but like i make a lot of subconscious references where i don't realize it's a reference to something until i like watch the movie back and i'm like oh yeah i guess that's from that like which part specifically are you thinking i'll just say the glue yeah i could see that yeah i could see that being a bit of a roger rabbit thing yeah that's a movie that like that movie definitely like scarred me a bit as a kid that is one of those like uh yeah, he, like on the surface seems like a fun kid friendly movie, but it really is like very adult. So yeah. as a kid watching it, it, it definitely like buried its way in there somewhere. It's so yeah, I Rob Jabez of the sadness and I were talking about Roger Rabbit, and he was like, that movie shouldn't work in so many different ways. So it's funny oh, yeah. I'm talking about it now, and I just had an interview with him a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, it's a movie. That's why the movie's awesome and why a lot of movies from that era are awesome is it's like a formula that shouldn't work, yeah. but you make it with passion and conviction. Take it, take the work seriously, and you can make a great, a great film out of it. So, yeah. so where did this come from, uh, the, origin, the origin of like this story, and how did it evolve? I think the real origin of this was watching uh like just little monster movies with pierce uh like especially during like peak pandemic times he would stream on twitch just like all sorts of movies and i he'd let people call out recommendations and stuff and so i got him on this tangent of little monster movies and we just got fixated on this idea of like making a puppet movie because like they're I mean, there's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of like really awful ones too. And just watching them and getting in the headspace of a producer who's like, oh yeah, we'll like save money by just having puppets. Uh, like it really just like burrowed its way into my brain and started expanding. So that was really the starting point. Was And like, I think the movie specifically that started it was Ghoulies Go to College, which I love. 
I cannot recommend enough. It is uh, a fun, wacky movie. My favorite of the Ghoulies movies. Really? Um, okay. Most people say. Oh too, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I and that's the reaction a lot of people give. They're like, "Oh, okay," but like, I think people take for granted the like world building of that movie, like the whole like prank culture thing, and how they're all called pranks are called Yanks. Like, there's just like a lot of there's more effort in that movie than people give it credit for. Um, and then, like, even structurally, there's, like, elements of Frankie in there. Like, it ending with, like, a big boss monster, I realize, right, is, like, okay, yeah. is very much a ghoulies go to college thing. But it's also, uh, I was telling in the last interview, it's, like, the structure of the movie turns into Spawn, I realized, where it's, like, they go to a crazy universe, have a big showdown, escape the universe, and then the big monster from that universe pursues them back right. into that house. Um, so there's like a the double climax of Spawn is definitely a reference point <laughs> to Mikey Perico. Um But I yeah, now that I see, uh, now that I think of Ghoulies uh, go to college, I, now I can see like all the little elements that you would place in there too, just like the comic book from the movie, like where they find the comic book in the beginning, oh, yeah, and then how it leads to the the rest of the story. Yeah, yeah. There's like, like you can tell Beekler really loves the material and he like is having a blast making that movie like yes it's very broad maybe too broad at times but like i don't know all the like like the lead guy is very charming i just i don't know i feel like that movie does a lot of things right and it's like it charms me in its obnoxiousness like i really love that they anytime the ghoulies are on screen they're like they should just be talking all the time so they're just constantly nattering away in the background and it's like like even in that they're doing little bits like there's so many throwaway lines that you like you're not paying attention you don't catch but yeah it's, it's a movie jam-packed uh with stuff that i find infinitely rewatchable see i just watched that for the first time and like i i, I didn't know how to take it just right up front because i'm used to the first two so I oh, finally got to see it and, and I did have a good time with it and man, what a, it's a complete, the tone now that you say that it's just like, I, I get it now. Like, and I was making comparisons to like garbage pail kids a little bit too, because. Oh yeah. There's definitely a bit of that, like yeah. that kind of like misguided, uh, product placement movie. Yeah. Like it feels like the Freakos maybe could have been like, a like a line of weird toys first. Like, uh, what are they called Boglins? Yeah, like some kind of like that almost. Yeah, that they'd be like, oh, let's make this into a movie. Like I could <laughs> see that if Frankie Fruko was made in the '80s, that would be the mythology behind it. Is that it was like some kind of merchandise first, and then turned into a movie. That's, um, yeah. In how, especially in how like specific all the characters are, like the looks are very distinct, um, and so that to me feels like like a very like toy first kind of logic awesome well i mean i know we only have a little bit more time left what would you say uh what i know you're going to be doing death stalker do you have another project in mind that maybe someone's trying to green light i you know you can't talk about it but just just that it's in the work i mean for me right now like the focus is just trying to get death stalker done there's still like pretty long road ahead and yeah. uh I'm trying to like build up the energy to <laughs> to cross that finish line it's a huge movie, but it's a huge but small movie. Right. Uh, it, you know, it's the kind of movie that doesn't get made in Canada often or at all, I might say. <laughs> I don't know if there is like a Canadian fantasy action horror fantasy movie out there. Desert but movie, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of like a lot of work to go on that so that's where my focus is right now and i just kind of want to like fantasize about getting to go to sleep after that right i imagine yes well i look forward to all of it congratulations on this one i really did enjoy it a lot i don't think there's okay. anything else out there and you guys should totally see it when it comes out is there a date that we can tell anybody we don't have any hard dates yet unfortunately okay. i can get you that info once i have it uh i think we we're kind of waiting to see how this went before discussing like what the next move was but there are festivals lined up the hope is to maybe do limited theatrical and then uh obviously because show factory there will yeah. be a nice blu-ray at some point so we can Sounds guarantee good. that for 
for all you physical media heads out there. So, yeah. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best of luck out there on the festival circuit. So have fun, man. Thanks, man. It's great chatting with you again. Boy.